boy, here we go. Okay. Um, and he's gesturing to me, and I'm kind of looking at his loud, and I can't blame him. Um, and, I just, and he was like, he's like, I'm really sorry I didn't see you. And I like, I took a breath, and I was like, that was really scary. And I'm a little up right now, and I don't think I can talk. He's like, I just, I'm sorry, and we drove off. It's like, that's probably not as good as that can yeah. go. Like, I, anything else I have is profanity and yelling. I just, that was really, really terrible. Holy smokes! It's episode four of Bike Vids! Okay, on this episode, we're going to have our first episode focusing on the topic of safety. In particular, um, the interactions that happen between cyclists and motorists while out on the roadways. Of course, none of us head out for a bike ride hoping to get hurt or hoping to have a negative uh, interaction, but this could also be a very tender topic because those accidents do happen and those accidents can be very, very serious. So a lot of people would say safety first, but at bike vids we say communication first. Um, and uh, often in these dangerous situations, we're forced to interact with each other and sometimes these conversations uh, could go horribly wrong. And so we're gonna talk about the need for good communication as the crux of bicycle safety. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to Bike Vids. Give uh, some thumbs up, some thumbs down, some comments, unsubscribe, resubscribe, whatever you want to do. Um, but thank you, uh, and I hope you enjoy the episode. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Bike Vids, our first safety issue. And when it comes to bikes, a lot of safety issues involve interactions with cars. And at the crux of those interactions is often uh, the need to communicate, sometimes in a kind of a heightened state of panic uh, or uh, after a dangerous incident has taken place. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the foundations of that communication. And today I have my friend Brad. Thank you for being here. Brad, do you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Brad. Uh, I work uh, locally in Santa Cruz County for the 911 Ambulance Company. Uh, I do clinical education and research, uh, and, and an avid cyclist, uh, both recreationally and uh, for transportation. Primarily, I use a bike. Uh, so I have a lot of opportunity to communicate with motorists and pedestrians. Awesome, and um, Brad and I met because uh, we both uh, fashion ourselves, uh, you know, up and coming UCI uh, cycle cross riders. We met uh, doing some, some cycle cross. And um, one time we were prepping for the season. And of course, uh, probably unfortunately during COVID right now, cross is in fact uh, not, not, not coming. coming. Um, but um, one time we were doing some, uh, some intervals. Uh, I was very proud of myself that I actually did some kind of training. Um, and we were out doing some intervals, and I don't remember exactly what happened, but I do remember we were on Bean Creek Road, a local road in our area, and probably a car either was driving way too fast or came way too close. Or and, both. Yeah, and I don't think you unloaded on the person, but, you know, there was some kind of words. And, I don't, I, and, and then you asked me after that, um, you know, you said something like, hey, you know, like, are you okay with that or are you cool with that? It was basically, you were asking me about how I was reacting to your reaction and kind of like gauging that and trying to make sure that didn't make me feel comfortable. Do you remember that incident? Totally. And, okay. and mostly around, uh, I keep, uh, if my response to that driver then provokes a further confrontation, that's a choice I'm making, but you're with me and that's not a choice I should be making for you. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd never, I really appreciate that because I've never had anyone ask me that. I've definitely been on rides where someone has, you know, I didn't think you crossed the line, but I've been with people where I feel like they didn't, and it did make me feel uncomfortable. But um, can you maybe describe for us when we're thinking about communicating between, uh, when we have incidents between drivers and, and uh, us on bikes, can you maybe describe an incident either that maybe um, that you're, you're happy with how the communication went or that you kind of um, maybe think wasn't productive or maybe uh, you know, it's just something, again, you think was just right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I had one 
maybe two months back um, that was one of my, I was really proud of my communication in the circumstance, um, which is not always the case uh, because I don't, I don't like myself best when I'm triggered and I'm emotional and my adrenaline blows. Um, and that's usually where I want the part of my brain that has me not talk to kick in. And, and I don't always do a good job of keeping it. But this time I did. Um, I was going to work and on a, I commute on a road that has no shoulder. So I'm always in the lane. Um, and I, I kind of think communicating with motorists starts with how we position ourselves. So I'm always trying to communicate that, hey, there is a bicycle here and, and I do know where I belong. Um, and so this person didn't like where I was, decided to go around me on a blind turn, and then swerved back into me. My assumption was they were communicating that they did not belong where I was. Um, and uh, I slowed down and kind of let them go, and they slowed down, and I couldn't quite tell what it was they wanted. Um, and they were gesturing and doing some other things, and the part of my brain I liked the most kicked in and just said, like, take a couple deep breaths here. We're not sure where this is going. And then they stopped. So I stopped. Um, I don't like to approach a vehicle that can swerve and move into me and do things, so I stopped behind the car. Um, and the person yelled a bunch of things at me about where I didn't belong and how I'm supposed to be uh, in a bike lane that does not exist in this location. Um, and so I told them that that wasn't true. And I was really happy. I didn't use profanity. and I didn't scream. I didn't yell, I just said, there's no bike lane, and when there's no bike lane, you're allowed to use the whole lane. And they told me they didn't believe that was correct, and I'm supposed to be hugging the white line, and I said, that also is not true, you should read your driver's handbook. Um, and then they said, the next time they saw me out there, they were going to have to pull over so we could have a talk, and they'd let me know how the road really works. And I was especially proud that I said that I don't think threats of physical violence solve anything, and they should probably spend their time reading their driver handbook instead. Right. Um, and they drove off angrily. Right. Um, and I liked that communication that I stayed calm in my heart. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. Yeah. That's and, that's a, and that's a really interesting scenario because um, think about the kind of effort and decision making uh, that needs to happen in order for the driver to decide. They, it's everything says just for that driver, whether that driver thinks they're in the right or in the wrong, everything says just keep going. But mm -hmm. when the driver decides to pull over and have a talk about it, I mean, that takes effort, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, was, it was concerning to me, um, mm -hmm. to the point that I then communicated the interaction to law enforcement, mm -hmm. um, especially given the swerve that they did. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that's not a first time event, and they will hit someone at some point, and I needed to not be that that was just an oops accident. We all know bikes are crazy and do things that get them hit. Right. Um, I rarely communicate my interaction with motorists to law enforcement, and this was egregious enough that. Right. Um, I had a, a scenario, um, it was where I was in the wrong, and I actually uh, cut off a car. And, you know, all's well that ends well. But the person was upset at me, and rightly so. And, you know, I think some of the what causes that in this case was that the person also was feeling a, a rush of, of adrenaline because they could have just hurt somebody, right? And so as we were driving down uh, the road together, uh, him in his car and me, the he was continuing to yell, you know, everything under the sun at me, and I was yelling back at the person. But what I was yelling back was, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." And by the time we got about a block, um, the person kind of face kind of changed, and I literally, uh, you know, saw that, and he said what? And I said, no, I'm sorry. I was actually wrong, right? Um, and even though, you know, all parts of that communication didn't go well, I feel like in, in the end, um, in the end, things, um, you know, did. <laughs> so that's good. Um, what, um, what's something in terms of, uh, you know, maybe, things that 
you know, obviously, sometimes we replay these incidents, right? Um, when we have these communication uh, issues with drivers. Are there things, uh, you know, maybe that you wish that, you know, in hindsight, approaches that you would rather take with drivers or things that you've seen where you kind of wished uh, cyclists would communicate differently with drivers? Uh, for myself, there's two things that I try to work on all the time, and one is not shouting things, especially not shouting things in anger, um, because I don't think it changes people's opinions, um, or if it does, it tends to change them to the negative. It just reinforces that cyclists are wild and crazy, or a motorist yelling things at me just reinforces that motorists are wild and crazy and, and uncaring. Um, and Probably that's not true for the vast majority of us. Um, I don't think yelling things at people tends to ever change their mind. Um, you know, if someone cuts me off and I scream something, oh, that's, that's a very good point. Um, I don't think that ever happens. Um, so most of the time, I wish I would have just stayed quiet. If, if their mistake was through ignorance and they didn't see me, going up and shouting at them isn't going to suddenly make them replay that and remember that I was there. So then um, that's why I try to be really proactive um, and assertive on the roadways as much as I can um, to position myself to be seen. I've got an array of bright lights and blinky things. Um, I position myself on the road to be as visible as I can. And if someone doesn't see that, no amount of shouting changes that. So, um, so some of the best uh, ways that we're actually communicating is before verbal communication before the incident takes place <laughs> yeah. um, and then I try to be I try to be gracious if I can on the roadway I'm very I point and I wave a lot to give directions um, there are times where I think motorists are trying to be courteous and in trying to be overly courteous they create threat yes um, and so I, I do a lot of directing and then as people are doing that I try to I give them a little Mm -hmm. wave and a smile. Mm -hmm. um, even when I'm frustrated by their being courteous. Like, don't be mad at people for trying to help you out. Um, right. They don't understand that what they're doing can create other dangers. Um, right. So yeah, be gracious. Give a smile. Give a wave. I think the more we acknowledge that most of the time people are trying to do a good job um, and acknowledge that and connect with one another, the better things get as a system. Absolutely. Um, you know, I wish that just yelling things at people was a great uh, way of learning. Yeah, if it did, um, Twitter would solve all our problems. Right. Um, and Bike Vid's uh, audience, you may not know that your uh, host here is actually a high school teacher uh, in my other life. And if yelling at things got people <laughs> to learn things, then my first year of teaching was the best year ever. Um,